This video covers section 12.9 through 12.10 in the Klein book. The first topic to be covered in section 12.9 are reactions of alcohols, substitution, and elimination. These are reactions for the, for the most part you already know. You can have SN1 reactions of alcohols with a nucleophile such as hydrobromic acid where brom the bromide ion is the nucleophile and you're going through this carbocation intermediate upon the protonation of the alcohol which then leaves as water. For SN2 reactions, we have the one-step reaction with a primary alcohol treated with hydrobromic acid, and these are generally forceful conditions because we need to protonate water and then, or pro protonate the alcohol, and then in a second step, have the bromide ion attack that primary carbocation, or prim sorry, the primary carbon, and water leaves as a good leaving group. Better yet, we can use zinc chloride with hydrochloric acid to transform our alcohol into an alkyl chloride. In the mechanism, the oxygen atom attacks zinc chloride, forming this intermediate with a positively charged oxygen atom. In the second step, a chloride anion from hydrochloric acid. I can't get the can't get all the lone pairs in there. It's at the bottom of my screen. That chloride attacks the carbon containing oxygen, and then we have the zinc complex leaving um, negatively charged. Next, we have conversion of the alcohol first to a tosylate. And recall that the tosylate group has the following structure. And this is a good leaving group because it's the conjugate base of toluyl sulfonic acid, which has a pKa of minus 2.8. And anytime you've got the conjugate base of a strong acid, it's going to be a good leaving group. Recall that we install the tosyl group by treating our alcohol with tosyl chloride and pyridine. And then we want to use the nucleophile to displace that tosylate. So now we've got our good leaving group, and whatever our incoming nucleophile was, it's now here. Next, we've got reaction of our alcohol with SOCl2 or PBr3, and these are new reactions to you. We use SOCl2 pyridine to make an alkyl chloride, and then we use PBr3 to make an alkyl bromide. Recall that the structure of pyridine is this uh, aromatic amine. We'll go through the mechanisms on the next slide. First, the mechanism of the reaction of SOCl2 with an alcohol In our first step, the lone pair on our alcohol oxygen atom attacks the electrophilic sulfur atom in SOCl2, giving us this intermediate Zwitter ion. In the second step, we reform the sulfur oxygen double bond and kick out one of the chlorine atoms as a leaving group when we get to the following cation. Then pyridine takes a proton from our cation, leaving it neutral with pyrid a protonated pyridine. And in a final step, the chloride anion from
that is produced from step two attacks the carbon containing our good leaving group and we get the formation of SO2 gas and the chloride anion and our desired alkyl chloride. And the mechanism of our alcohol treated with PBr3. In the first step, our oxygen lone pair attacks the phosphorus atom and a bromine atom departs giving us a cation which the bromine that departed as bromide the bromide ion then attacks the carbon attached to oxygen we break that carbon oxygen bond and get our alkyl halide and HOPBr2 Familiar to you already are E1 reactions of alcohols. Here we take an alcohol, either secondary or tertiary, and treat it with concentrated sulfuric acid to form an alkene. And keep in mind that this goes through a cationic intermediate, and this is formed after the protonation of the alcohol. So we want to protonate this alcohol first and then have it leave as water to form our carbocation, which then undergoes elimination to produce the alkene. E2 reactions of alcohol require first the conversion of the alcohol to a tosylate, and you already know that we do that with tosyl chloride pyridine. And then now that we've got our good leaving group, we can use a strong base that's a good nucleophile to accomplish a one-step E2 mechanism. Note that because we don't have a carbocation, this is not subject to rearrangement. Let's do some practice and compare the outcomes of these different E reactions. I want you to pause your video and draw the products of these reactions, and then when you are done drawing the products, press play again. In the first case, we protonate the alcohol. So here I'm showing an abbreviated mechanism without all of the arrows. So we form this carbocation, then that departs as a good leaving group. This secondary carbocation will undergo rearrangement to make our more substituted tertiary carbocation. Then when we undergo elimination, we want to produce the more substituted alkene, which gives us this product. By contrast, with tosyl chloride pyridine, we first convert that alcohol into a tosylate, and we actually need a second step here, so we're going to use three is sodium methoxide, and we have to use one of these protons We do elimination in one step, and that gives us this alkene. So the reaction that you choose to do with your alcohol is going to affect which product you get.
Next, we cover the reaction of alcohols, particularly we're interested in oxidation reactions. And an oxidation reaction can either be of a secondary alcohol going to a ketone, or it can be a primary alcohol going to an aldehyde or a carboxylic acid. Note that only primary and secondary alcohols can undergo oxidation. For oxidizing reagents, what you're looking for is reagents that have a lot of oxygen atoms. For example, we have chromium trioxide, sodium dichromate, and pyridinium chlorochromate. These are all three oxidizing agents that we can use to oxidize alcohols. With chromium trioxide and sodium dichromate, we end up producing a carboxylic acid. And with pyridinium chlorochromate, for a primary alcohol, we stop at the aldehyde, so we're not as it's not as oxidizing of a reagent as the chromium trioxide and the sodium dichromate. For secondary alcohols, all three of these reagents form a ketone. The carboxylic acid simply isn't a choice here. Note that we are skipping the mechanism for all three of these reagents, so you don't need to worry about these mechanisms. Our next reaction is the Swern oxidation. Here we take COCl2, which has this structure, and treat our alcohol with that and DMSO, our solvent. And then in a second step, triethylamine, and this stops at the aldehyde as well. The mechanism for this reaction is mechanism number 12.9. You're welcome to look at it if you're interested, um, but it's a really long mechanism, so I don't want to go over it in the lecture. But note that you will not be tested on this mechanism, so this is just for your own interest if you want to go to mechanism 12.9. Next, we have the Desmartin periodinane, and that has this following structure where we've got a hypervalent iodine atom with acetyl groups attached to it. And this serves also as a gentle oxidizing agent that transforms a primary alcohol into an aldehyde. The mechanism for this, or at least the key intermediate, is on page 536 of your book if you're interested, and know that you will not be tested on this mechanism either. So that's all I have for today. Again, as usual, if you have questions, send me a text me or a Canvas message or post your question to Piazza. Have a great day.